Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, is it a bird, is it a plane, or maybe a satellite? Viking Space Probe is an 8.5% double IPA from Stone Brewing Company in Escondido, California. This one comes on recommendation from viewer Andrew Fincham. He recommended Viking Space Probe on my multi-hearted mega fish flight video. Thanks to John from Sombeer.com for that name, where I did a little head-to-head -head between the current varieties of Bell's Two-Hearted, and I'm still trying to find a source for some Bell's Black-Hearted for another go-around there. But back to Viking Space Probe. Stone says the flavor profile on this one is a mix of tropical fruit along with lime zest and a hint of cilantro. That sounds very interesting. It also features Ella and Citra hops. Now, most of you are probably familiar with Citra hops, especially if you've been drinking IPAs or beer, craft beer for any time, you know, any recent time period. But Ella's a new one for me. Ella hops are an Australian variety and they're related to galaxy hops. But what sets Ella apart is that half of it is a German hop, comes from a German hop, which gives it a floral aroma and soft spice. But when used in dry hopping, it starts to exhibit those galaxy characteristic. Again, sounds pretty interesting. So let's take a look at the label and we'll get this into a glass. Fun fact, this beer comes out of Stone's Small Batch Brewing and Innovation Department in Napa. And they brew beers on a 10 barrel pilot system, just like most breweries do. Stone obviously brews stuff like Stone IPA and, you know, other beers like that on huge systems. But this one came out of a small, just 10 barrel system that's about 300 gallons. All right, so let's take a look at the can here. Really cool can. Stone has really been killing it lately, in my opinion, on their can design, on their label design. They follow this same very, un um, not unique, but very regimented kind of line. They all look very similar, but they all have their own special little spin on everything. And this one's no different. It's a dark, deep, dark blue can on the front. It's got a lot of stars on it. Looks like, a, you know, you're looking at the night sky if there's no light pollution or whatnot. It says Stone Viking Space Probe Double IPA and has the gargoyle's head there with some kind of like orbits around it with all these little satellites and, and planets and whatnot swirling around it. And it says Unfiltered Double IPA, 8.5% alcohol by volume, 12 fluid ounces. And then, of course, on the back, Stone has lots of words here, a whole lot of them. And I'm going to read them to you, but I'm going to try and do it quickly. It says a hoppy, got to take a big breath, a hoppy cosmic nebula in the spirit of all the exploratory missions deployed across the galaxy, be they spacecraft, Viking or other, we're constantly probing the world of beer back here on Earth. That quest has brought us to this latest creation, which comes from our brewing team at Stone Brewing Napa. With a subtle haze reminiscent of some far off nebula and further complemented with the juicy flavors of Ella and Citra hops. This beer is most definitely out of this world, crafted to be enjoyed on Earth, but if intelligent life does exist out there, we're pretty sure they'll like it too. And then next to that is all their kind of social media information, their website, stonebrewing.com, slash Viking Space Probe, the Facebook stuff, Instagram, Twitter, all that great stuff, and even a hashtag. A hashtag, can you believe it? And I'm going to put that in my tweet when I talk about this. It says... It's an ale brewed and canned by Stone Brewing, Escondido, California, and Richmond, Virginia, made in the USA, and the government warning. And uh, uh, a lot of breath. Canned on January 8th, 2020. And enjoy by, it looks like it says, okay, it looks like it's, okay, May 7th. I thought it said 15. It looks like 050720. So, yeah, that's about six months. Gives you six months, actually five months. But you should probably bring, drink this pretty fresh. I'm going to use my draft therapy Tigu glass here to drink this fresh. Let's go ahead and crack this. I'll get a nose out of the can and we'll get it into that beautiful Tiku glass. Satisfying pop always of a can. Getting just that kind of juicy New England kind of vibe going on here. Getting a citrus aroma, not getting a whole lot of much else though. And that's just out of the can. Bad sniffer, gotta sniff it three times, you know, because I think it smells different, different ways you, you smell it. So let's go ahead and pour this. And that's the dark color I was expecting, like a bit of a dark yellow, borderline orange color, a little juicy looking coming out of the can, but collecting in the glass here is very dark orange. And that head is a, about a finger and a half worth of head. It is off white, a little dark. It's in between. It's kind of like 
in between white and orange. It's kind of on its way there, but it is dissolving pretty quick. If it seems like it is, maybe it's not. So as you can see from the overhead, really like dense, cloudy looking, a cloudy looking head across the top with those large bubbles, the exit point from the from the beer pouring in there. Let's go ahead and hold this up. Very hazy. You can tell, as they mentioned, they didn't lie. This is not filtered looking. I have this big chunk of sediment here, white sediment on the bottom of the glass, but hey, what do you expect? All right, so I cannot super hazy. Like I can just barely see that something's going in front right there in front of my lights, but that is really hazy. And a better nose here. Getting way more citrus than I was getting out of the can. I was getting a little bit out of the can, but I'm getting like loads of citrus here. And I feel like I am picking up on a little bit of lime zestiness in there as well. It just has that different smell than most kind of hazy IPAs, again, hazy New England, whatever you want to call it. Those juicy, sweet kind of IPAs. I'm getting a different tinge on it, and I'm going to attribute that to maybe a little bit of a lime. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Cheers. That, yeah, that is out of this world. That is a really, really good just cross. It's a really good cross of a New England style IPA and an IPA IPA, like a West Coast IPA. So let's start at the top. The mouth feels really medium, uh, kind of light, medium, um, maybe on the thicker light end of the spectrum, really close to medium. It's got, it's a, it's got like this cloudy kind of mouthfeel. It's not weighed down by any means. It's not heavy. It's a really just kind of like just middle of the road mouthfeel. It's got a really comforting, just medium mouthfeel. But the flavor that's in there is this really uh, orangey, citrusy flavor up front. It's citrusy, orange, sweet up front. And then on that finish, I get like this, um, I am getting this limey kind of zesty flavor in there. There's not really, there is this on the swallow on the middle, there's this, this hoppy bitterness in there. It's a citrus bitterness, but you know, it also has that kind of limey flavor in there and it has this candy kind of sugary flavor on the finish as well. So the opening sweetness that you get is, this juicy, citrusy flavor, you know, something you would expect from a big, just New England style IPA. And then on the swallow, it's not super smooth like a New England style IPA. That's when that bitterness comes through. And it's a citrus bitterness that's in there. And then on the finish is this kind of just this different change on citrus. It's like a little bit more of a of a it's still it's not the hoppy part of it. It's not the bitter hoppy part of it. It's the it's like another citrus kind of kick in there. And that's where this kind of lime zesty lime juice kind of flavor comes through and then on the finish after that is when that candy sugar kind of flavor just kind of peeks its head out just a little bit and it looks around says hey i'm here too but i gotta tell you when i pick this beer up and i put it up to my mouth to take a drink and i get a smell as i you know take a drink i'm almost getting this I'm getting this little off-putting aroma in there. It's not coming through in the flavor, but because when I put it up to my mouth, it's it's so close to, you know, you breathe, maybe breathe in a little bit, or you just breathe into your mouth as you bring it up to your mouth. It's so close to when I take the drink. It's like this almost oxidized kind of flavor in there. And this is a canned beer. This was probably, well, I said it was canned on um, January 8th. This is February 16th, February 15th, day after Valentine's Day. So it can't, I mean, I wouldn't think it would get oxidized like that in a can in just a, a month and a half, you know, in six weeks, five weeks or whatever. It just, it doesn't really take too, I mean, I'm mentioning it, so I guess it does take a little bit away from it. It doesn't take away a whole lot from it, but it'd be a whole lot better if it wasn't in there. And every time I drink, I pick that up. And that, if I were grading this on like a point scale or a star scale or whatever, it would cut down 
it cut down, cuts down my enjoyment of the beer just a tiny bit. Now, it's not huge, but it's just that one thing, and it could just be me. It, it, it might not happen all the time, but for me, I'm picking that up. But I think this just has a really great combination of that New England style. You get the bitterness on the tail end, on the finish, on the swallow. I'm getting a lot more of that kind of citrusy bitterness. Maybe even now that I'm talking about it more, I'm getting almost this piney, like a little bit of a resinous kind of bitterness on the tail end as well. It's on the finish after the swallow, like on the aftertaste. That's where that kind of pokes through, but I'm still getting that really nice sweet citrus flavor up front. That little bitterness on the swallow and then that kind of liminess comes through, that candy sugar comes through. But it also, I think now in the aftertaste, I'm picking up a little bit on this piney, maybe a little resinous kind of kind of aftertaste as well. I mean, kudos to Stone being, you know, a larger brewery and being able to crank something out like this. This kind of Stone's really surprised me on their versatility from not only their regular, you know, mostly West Coast style IPAs. And I've always thought that Stone had this kind of flavor profile that regardless of the actual beer, it always had this. You could tell they were using the same strain of, you know, using the same hops or using the same something. They all had this something in common. This one kind of is the first one that I think breaks away from it. But I also think with that kind of piney resinous on the tail end, on the very aftertaste, it still honors that a little bit. And I think if you see uh, this one on the shelf, I think that this would be, for me, it would be another pickup, like an instant pickup. I think this is a really good change of pace from all the kind of juicy New England styles that we've seen for what now, a year and a half that have just been blowing up like crazy. This is a really good spin on that style. All right, friends, that has been Viking Space Probe from Stone Brewing. Have you had this beer or do you have some other beer recommendations or suggestions? that you'd like to see on the channel, let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, if you like beer, you might want to subscribe and click that bell because I'm here talking about beer twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, every Tuesday and Thursday, and it's all for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your next favorite if you're not subscribed and you give me those notifications. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. And remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries wherever they are. And most importantly, don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy. Thanks for watching. Cheers.